Well, hello and welcome to this webinar on the topic today of LCM's digital exams. My name is Sharon Mark Tegard, and along with Dr. Sally Cathcart, we are the co-founders and directors of the Curious Piano Teachers. And we both run uh, piano teaching studios. I'm based in Northern Ireland and uh, Sally is over there in England. Good morning, Sally. Good morning there, Sharon. It's lovely to be here and it's great to have quite so many people on call. I can see them already flooding in. So welcome <laughs> and it shows the really high level of interest, doesn't it, in, in, in this it topic. Um, now, for those of you that haven't heard about the Curious Piano Teachers, we're an online membership organisation and that we help piano teachers from all around the, all around the globe to learn as much as they teach. And as Sharon said, we are both, uh, we are both piano teachers ourselves and uh, we love being here and helping out in any way that we can. And we've got lots of members I know on the webinar today. And I think if you're curious about, more curious about what we're going to do, we're going to have a bit more information for you soon. Um, back over to you, Sharon, though. Great stuff. Okay. Um, and I think just to get an idea of how familiar you, you are with the Curious Piano Teachers, I'm going to get Sally in just a moment to send out a poll, um, which we'd love you to respond to. But today we are very, very privileged and delighted to be welcoming Merv Young, who is the head of LCM Exams, onto our live call. Merv, good morning. How are you? I'm very well. Good morning. Good morning to uh, everybody who's here so far and is, is in the process of joining. It's, it's an absolute pleasure and honour to, uh, to be with you all this morning or this afternoon or this evening, depending on whereabouts you are um, on the planet. But uh, hello to you all. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Merv. So on today's webinar, Merv is going to be giving us an overview of LCM's digital exam offerings. He's also going to be answering uh, some of the questions that you've been sending away over the past week. Now, um, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to everyone um, who is no doubt also joining us right now and who has submitted questions. I do also want to say that we have received um, close to 200 questions. So although Merv is going to do his very best to provide you with the information that you want to know, I just also, also want to say that in 60 minutes, it's not going to be possible to respond to every single question. Now, normally on a webinar, we have lots of uh, live participant chat. Um, however, the time to ask Merv questions directly, that's my past, um, because obviously we've had that opportunity for, the, um, for uh, the period of about a week to 10 days. And also, we have had um, 650 of you register for this call. So obviously, it, we cannot keep answering uh, lots of questions. Um, so, also a little bit of housekeeping. We only have 500 seats on this call. I can see we are currently, um, we're just a few minutes in and we're currently halfway to filling our seats. So please do not hop off the call because if we max out at 500, you will not be able to get back on again. But I do wanna say that we do have a webinar replay. So if you've registered for this call, that will automatically, uh, we'll be sending out the, the video to you by email later on today. Sally, how are you getting on with the poll? Just gonna come back to you for some yeah, I'm, I Well, I'm just going to, okay, no, sorry. I was still busy uh, emailing everybody. You didn't actually say to do the poll. So oh, there we go, <laughs> I've done the poll now. The poll is there. So please do um, just go for that poll. How well do you know the Curious Piano Teachers? And um, lots and lots of people on the call already. And just to uh, emphasize what Sharon was saying, that the chat is closed today. Uh, you ca any questions that you've got can come to us, but they need to be questions. We won't be answering any questions, new questions about the, uh, we won't be forwarding any new questions to Mother. So any problems that you've got with sound or, or technical issues, then please do um, ask and you can ask me and I'll be manning the chat mostly today. So here we go. And we have got 70% who are saying the webinar is your first encounter with the Curious Planet Teachers. And so, well, hey, that's great stuff. Welcome. And we're, it's lovely to have you here. 21% have heard about us and we have 10% who are members. Well done. Welcome to those members. Okay, I'm just going to end that poll now. It's just about constant that is. So welcome to everybody. Sharon, back over to you. 
Wonderful. Okay. So what I'm just going to do is I am um, at this point, I'm going to um, <clears throat> just for those of you who may be new to the Curious Piano Teachers, just going to do a little run through um, of what we have. We have an online membership site. And I just want to highlight a couple of the things um, that we have coming up um, very, very soon. I mean, obviously, uh, at the minute, if you have been across to our website um, in the past uh, week, you will see that we have a membership site. And currently, everyone who joins um, as a new member, you get the first month completely free. So it's an opportunity to get in there and see exactly what's there. We have on the membership site ready to use lesson resources. Um, so that's a really extensive library of um, PDFs uh, and videos, new content on new topics is added every single month. We also, and this is the really special thing that we do, we have um, members have the opportunity to chat, chat with other piano teachers. We have a member exclusive Facebook group. We also, and this is just a new thing from the beginning of, um, of lockdown, um, is we have these twice weekly, just informal chats uh, on Zoom. We also have Slack groups um, for detailed peer help and support. So I know that, for example, some teachers are currently wanting um, to get a little bit more of an online presence. And so they are creating their own uh, website. So we have a Slack channel for everyone who is currently doing that. So um, then we also have some member exclusive webinars. And I just want to mention this particular one uh, because it relates really, really um, closely to, to what we're talking about today. So it's next month, it's September, and the topic is tips for helping students prepare for the discussion component of LCME recorded exams. And that's going to be including sample responses to selected questions at all levels. And the other thing that we have um, going on this particular month is from the 21st of August to the 2nd of September, uh, we have a close relationship with Black Rock Music UK. And um, Peter Simpson over there does the fabulous member exclusive discount deals the whole year round. But at this time of year, particularly for UK piano teachers getting ready to get back into a new term. Um, he gives us, um, for a period of time, a 25% coupon code. So um, if you're wanting to stock up on LCM handbooks, you will be able to get 25% off. So just want to, um, before um, I hand back to Sally, just to clarify, um, that is the website, um, curiouspianoteachers.org forward slash join and you get free access to the membership site for one month. So, okay, um, I think without further ado, I'm gonna just hand right back over to Sally again. And Sally, I know you're gonna place everything um, in a little bit of context for us. I'm, I'm gonna try and share, and just to say, I have shared the, uh, the link to that page over in the chat. So just before we get, started with the main presentation i just want to take a few minutes to put exams and what we're going to be discussing today into context so we know from the amount of people that are on here that uh, over the last six months the world has changed for all of us hasn't it and just about everyone and it's no exaggeration to say that has had to change their way of living and this has had i think a big impact and continues to have a big impact on our own well-being as individuals and actually on our mental states as well. You know, Sharon talked about these community chats that we're having there. <clears throat> and for some teachers, that has been a real lifeline, somebody else to talk to, not about teaching necessarily, but about um, anything else that they might need to share. So as in many other professions and areas of life, uh, the changes have been quite profound. And I think for, for, for many of us, it's long lasting. It's not going to go away. Now, back in the UK, which is where we're based in March, within a matter of weeks, all the piano teachers that could, and I know for some research that we've already done, that that was actually the majority of us, we moved our teaching online. Now, I did a bit of research for my PhD into the history of piano teaching, and I think that if a Victorian piano teacher had walked into many private piano lessons back in January, just January 2020, 20, 2020, 2020, they would have recognised the lesson as being very similar to what they would have given. Um, 
she would have seen because it is was mostly a female uh, profession and, and still is actually but she would have recognized many aspects a teacher-led approach uh, a master apprentice model and maybe a focus around preparation for an instrumental exam but just six months eight months later even now i'm pretty sure they'd find it a very different and maybe somewhat foreign experience some of the same elements, of course, but I think these days we've all had to adjust our teaching to online work. And that means a more pupil-led approach, um, better use of questions from teachers, and more direct and giving more direct and purposeful feedback. What you do online is very different from what you can do in face-to-face. -face. And I think what we can do online has many, many benefits. Also, I think what has changed is the less emphasis on exam preparation because just like the rest of us, the exam boards have not been able to continue with their usual methods of delivery, which up till this point had been almost exclusively in person, face-to-face -face exams. So I just want us to uh, think about this moment in time from, from an exam board's point of view, and I'm talking about the main big three ones at the moment. So everyone, who works for the exam boards has been working remotely away from home or away from the centralized and more streamlined operations that you get when you work in the same building. And we all know from our own personal experience now that everything takes twice as long when that's the case. And the more people that are involved in the decision making, the longer it takes. And believe you me, exam boards have had to make some big and tough decisions in the last few months. They've had to create on the whole an entirely new format for exams. Now, fortunately, LCM were ahead of the game on this, I think, with the with they already had an option for that. However, they've also had to wait for Ofpol, which is the regulatory body here in the UK, which is a government organization that's also been undergoing the same problems. They've had to wait for them to create an extraordinary regulatory framework. And then it's had to be ratified and all these bits and bobs take time. And then finally, when all that has been uh, put in place, they've had to work out the nuts and bolts of delivery. So it means hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of planning and hundreds of hours of coding everything to get all the online stuff up and running in some shape or fashion. And as I say, this applies to all the three main exam boards. They've had to adapt, they've had to create, they've had to change really, really rapidly to a situation. And like all of us, in some ways, we are, have been running to keep up. And now, maybe with this little bit of summer, we're beginning to catch our breath and settle down a bit. And of course, all the people that are doing this are just human. They too have been experiencing the same levels of anxiety and stress as everyone else. Now, I don't tell you all this for you to feel sorry for them, but to place the enormous changes that they have been experiencing into perspective. They mirror really what we've been doing on our own personal level, but on a much, much bigger scale. So with all that in mind, I'm just going to hand straight back over to Sharon and um, for her to continue. Sharon, over to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Sally. I think it's really useful just to have... Um, just to realise, because I know that as piano teachers, we have been, it's been hard work. I was even saying to Sally, I was trying to read something online and I think my eyes are going, <laughs> because I have been doing so much screen time. It's, it's hard um, uh, for, for everyone. It's been a big challenge. Now, um, just before we hand over to Merv, Sally is going to send out another poll. And this time we want to know, have you used LCME's digital exams yet? So it's just a, a simple answer, yes, no, and there's a third option for uh, no, but um, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Okay, so I think without further ado, uh, we can come back to the results of that poll later. But um, once again, I just want to welcome Merv. Merv, all over to you. Thank you very much, Sharon and Sally. Thank you both very much. And hello again to all of you. Um, my name is Merv Young and, and I am the head of LCM examinations. For those of you that don't know me, seeing sort of some of the names that flash past and there's, there's some names there that I do recognise. So those of you that do know me, hello. Um, for those of you that don't, just very, very briefly, my background, I've been with um, 
University of West London and LCM exams um, for about the last four years now. Prior to that, um, I've got an extensive career in music education. The guitar is my instrument, not the piano. The guitar is my instrument. So my, but my background is very strongly as a, as, a, as a guitar teacher, running a private guitar teaching practice before my current role, as well as teaching in schools, etc. And I mention that really just so that you are assuming that I'm talking predominantly to teachers out there, um, that I am talking to you as somebody with a, a, an experienced background in the industry that you work in as well. And I think that's, uh, I, I feel that's quite an important point to make at this, at this stage. Um, so as, as you've just been hearing in the opening introductions, the last few months have been um, different, um, to, put it, to, to put it mildly, to put it politely. Um, throughout the past few months from LCME's perspective, our focus has been firmly on developing alternative options for our candidates that will enable them to carry on learning, playing and developing their creativity through our exam options, rather than having to stop learning, stop playing and stop progressing. And we wanted to enable you as teachers to continue with this particular area of your teaching as well. We wanted and still want people to be able to carry on as normal as far as possible with a range of flexible assessments. And this continues to drive us. And I'll be talking um, more about this as we go through, as I outline what we have done, uh, what we are going through at the moment and what um, my thoughts and plans are for LCME um, as we go through into the future. Um, now, I will mention briefly as well, now I'm aware that as part of this, as part of what we've been doing over the last few months, um, there's been some discontent around our processing of requests for, for fee refunds for some of the exams that we postponed, the face-to-face -face exams that we postponed, um, and also around our response process and procedure. And I'm, I'm sorry for that. I will offer that as an apology for the, uh, the delays and inconvenience that there have been around that. We are working to rectify and resolve as many of those issues um, as quickly as possible at the moment. Um, so just to sort of develop on some of the points that uh, Sally was mentioning just in the opening there, um, we did have to work quite quickly in the early stages of lockdown. Lockdown for the UK was the middle of March. Um, to provide some alternative options. And we split those into two broad categories. We have recorded exams and online exams. And we have experience before, before COVID, before the lockdown, we've had um, experience in offering various flexible forms of assessment anyway. So this was a relatively comfortable area for us to begin with, which was helpful. Um, and we also were coming into this, particularly with some experience of of recorded exams, um, although nothing quite like the extent to which we had to get things um, ready for what's happened, but we'll talk about that in a bit more detail. Now, um, there's also mentioned about the, um, the extraordinary regulatory framework, the ERF that Ofqual have put in place. I, I, I would say um, the response and the work, the cooperation, collaboration that we've had with Ofqual and the other regulators, but primarily Ofqual, has been excellent. They've been um, very communicative to us and very flexible um, in working with, um, with the measures that we need to put in place. And really very briefly, there's, there's sort of two broad areas that they, that they uh, gave us, two options as it were they gave us with you. you, either offer an adapted assessment or you offer a calculated assessment. Now calculated assessment essentially is what um, has been taking place in a lot of the schools where the end of year exams can't take place. Um, so they do that sort of process of you know, tallying up everything that the, that the kids have done over the year. Now, we can't do that as an example because we see your students, we see the candidate right at the end of the process. They've done all their learning with you and then bang, um, you know, they take the exam um, via ourselves at the end. So it's the adapted assessment process. And as the name implies, it is adapting our normal assessment processes to accommodate that. And that brings us to our recorded exam options and our online exam options. So just to talk about the um, recorded exams, what we have put in place, we got this platform up and running really quite quickly because as with my opening comments, we wanted to be able to respond as rapidly as possible to the candidates who had had their spring exams postponed because everything went into lockdown. So um, 
the recorded exams, for those that are familiar with some of our suite of exams already, they're quite similar to our recital grades. I'll come back to that point um, in a minute or two. Um, but they're available in most of our music subjects, most, the vast majority of our music subjects, and up to grade eight. And essentially, as the name implies, you record your content and submit the content to us, um, and we mark it. Um, there are two key elements of a traditional face-to-face uh, -face exam which are not possible to assess via a recorded exam, and that is um, the sight reading elements and also the oral assessment. So we've removed those two aspects from it, and this is where it bears resemblance to our recital grades that we've been running successfully for quite a while. Um, so it's more performance orientated. Um, you, you, you upload your performance of however many pieces or performance elements it is, depending on the subject area. Um, and you record your performance of the technical work, so scales, arpeggios, chords where it's relevant. Um, and also the, the viva or the discussion section as well. And with those two areas, what we've done, essentially, we've just um, detailed preset questions for the viva for the discussion section and sort of preset requirements uh, for you to uh, select for the technical work um, and you record all of those um, and and upload it so um, because we've essentially removed two elements from a traditional face-to-face -face exam so because we're not assessing sight reading or oral we've had to adjust the marks in some of the other sections so Typically, um, we'd be awarding more marks now for the technical work section and more marks for the discussion section. So what we did as part of that process, we uh, got a lot of intel from our examiner panel um, and from our existing assessment criteria and syllabuses and examiner handbook material around the sort of questions that we would ask for uh, the technical knowledge section for the discussion and just beef that up a little bit so there are more questions asked in, in, in very simple terms to justify the additional marks that we are now awarding for those sections. Um, and the requirements from your perspective or from your students perspective for the recorded exam, very, very simple because all you need is one of those or a tablet just to record your content. Um, there's uh, some detailed information on the website around the kind of the technical requirements and the resolution that we expect, but it's, it's no high tech gear, no specialist equipment that is needed at all. Um, it really is based around, um, you know, the sort of smartphone or tablet stuff that, that pretty much every household has got now. Um, so you record the content, you upload the material to the LCME website, um, and then the assessment and marking process takes place. There is, with the current platform, note word current, I'll come back onto that a little bit later on, but the current platform, there is an upload file limit of 150 megabytes. Um, now that has caused some issues, uh, potentially with some of you I'm speaking to today, but again, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up on some of those um, issues a little bit later on. Um, and our, our response to that is we've let, uh, made it clear that people can upload one file at a time so sort of record one piece record another piece record another piece rather than recording the entire performance of everything in one go because obviously that produces a, a, a significantly large file size which our website wasn't able to to deal with um, with the number of people that were um, interacting with this platform so um, that's very very simply that's how the recorded exam platform worked we had that up and running um, Within a, uh, within a few weeks, within about a month or so of, um, of everything going into to lockdown in the UK. So from around about the middle of April onwards, I believe it was. Online exams were uh, something very, very new for us. And we started the development process of this um, when we went into lockdown. The organisation, an organisation called ISOM, International School of Musicians, we've partnered with to develop the platform for this. We were having conversations with ISOM before lockdown, before COVID actually around this, because this was an area that we felt was something that was, that was gonna be good and useful to explore anyway, before all of this horrible chaos um, descended. So we were able to then continue those conversations quite rapidly. 
um, with ISOM to get the platform developed and was subsequently launched in um, the middle of May. And very, very simply, the online exam mirrors our face-to-face -face exam format. The only difference is the examiner sits in his or her home or studio and via an online link, much as I'm talking to you now, conducts the exam. It is no different at all in, in, the, in regards to the, the content and the format for what you would have in a face-to-face -face exam. All the elements are there. So technical work, performance elements, sight reading, viva, discussion, oral assessment, all exactly the same. So um, the basic platform that is used is, is Zoom, um, but if you are uh, technically minded, as fortunately our colleagues at ISOM are, um, there is an awful lot you can do with a Zoom platform when you, when you have um, the access to the right buttons to push. So um, the, the, the coding that has gone behind the scenes uh, to make this not just responsive to speech, but to tackle all the frequencies across the, um, you know, the, the, the spectrum of, of various instruments, the, the percussive sound of drum kits through to the soft tones of a piano or a flute or whatever it might be. It's all been accommodated. The platform, a lot, as you would expect, as you would hope and expect, um, a lot of time has gone into tackling issues around security. Um, all levels of security, security from the point of view of, of you know, a, a strange examiner talking to a child in another house, you know, all those issues, obviously the safeguarding issues, of course, we, we take extremely seriously, as you would expect, but also around safeguarding the material that we're sharing. Um, so for sight reading, for instance, um, the examiner will allow the candidate access to the sight reading material that they need, and there are security measures in place so that um, screenshots can't be taken by the candidates um, and where there's any audio files that need to be played for the oral assessment, for instance, um, those audio files are shared by the examiner so the candidate can play them at their side on their machine. And again, there's security measures in place so they can't be, um, they can't take sort of audio copies of, of the material as well. So we're safeguarding our own material. And of course, you, you are all, I'm sure, now teaching online because you have no choice and you're aware of the issues with that. You cannot sit in your teaching studio conducting a lesson with somebody else and play your instrument and have them playing along with you at the same time because it just doesn't work. There is a lag. There is always a lag. And even if the lag is a weeny, weeny fraction of a second, there is still a lag. So we've got round that because certainly with things like the oral Part of the exam if there's a passage of music being played and the candidate has to sort of you know tap the pulse or clap the pulse whatever it might be in response to it or clap back the rhythm if they're you know listening first but if it's something that involves an interaction then the audio file is sent to the candidate it plays back at the candidate's side so they are playing it back and interacting with it in whatever way they have to at the same time so the examiner hears everything being reproduced in time so we don't have any of those issues around kind of lags and so forth and for those instruments um, those sort of improvisational instruments so electric guitar for instance to use that as an example the same sort of process so when it gets to that section of the exam where it's a lead playing part or an improvisation or an accompanying section or something like that again the um, the, the audio file that would traditionally be played by the examiner live in a face-to-face -face exam um, they're sent down the line for the candidate to access and the audio is played at their side at the candidate's side so that everything kind of plays back. The whole process around um, sort of setting up the exam, coordinating around the dates and ensuring everything works, um, which is always a big concern, of course, as you would imagine, um, that is all handled by the support team that we have at ISOM. So, once we get the exam uh, entry in, we pass the information across to our colleagues there and they get in touch to run a connectivity test just to make sure everything works. And it doesn't always. And they've had, they've run some of these connectivity tests where they've had to suggest that, um, you know, you, you find, you need to find a different, a different venue somewhere else, you know, the, 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 another building, somebody else's house, whatever it might be, because, you know, the signal isn't strong enough there. Um, thus far, that process has worked well and they've had to change or suggest a couple of alternative um, locations for, for a small number of people um, and then with the alternative in place 
um, that's then worked very well. So the, the, the process of picking up that um, has been very effective. And they remain on hand as a sort of a support network um, in case things do go wrong. I have to say, so far, nothing has gone wrong. It will, of course it will. It would be stupid and naive of me to think otherwise. Of course it will. There will be technical issues. There, there are bound to be. But we have that support team in place so that if there is a problem on the day of the exam, um, they can run through checks. Is it at the examiner side? Is it at the candidate side? Is there a fix we can make? Obviously the worst case is there is no fix that's made because something has gone down, the internet has collapsed in a certain area or whatever it might be, then you know, we'll have to reschedule the exam. I mean, that's the, if you like, that's the last line in the sand. But there are a lot of other um, stages that they can go through before then. Um, and, and that's the important point that there is a sort of technical support team in place um, for that to provide that assistance going, going through. Um, so a few sort of, uh, if you like practicalities around around both options around both the recorded and online um, options um, I refer to the ERF that extraordinary regulatory framework from Ofqual um, at the beginning both of these options um, conform to the conditions that Ofqual have set out under the ERF um, so this means that under that adaptive framework that they've put in place that these are um, these are regulated qualifications. So if you're taking a grade six, seven or eight recorded exam or online exam under these conditions with what we have in place, um, yes, you get UCAS points. Um, so that's exactly, that's how this works. And you know, that Ofqual rightly so have made us jump through hoops for this and absolutely rightly so. And I'd be quite appalled if they didn't. Um, so we, you know, we've, we've kept up a good line of communication with them on that to keep them abreast of what we're doing. Uh, and what we're planning on doing as well in the future, which I'll come on to in a minute or two. Um, the exams, both recorded exams and online exams, are examined by our, our, our current panel of examiners. So you're, you're, you know, you've, you've got the experience of, um, of you know, many, many years and different skill sets across the music education sector and music performance sector from our, from our panel of examiners. And we've worked really, really hard, as you would expect, to ensure that the assessment criteria that we use are, are robust and are scrutinized and are held to account as well um, so that you have um, you know confidence and, and faith in what we're doing. Um, the exam fees um, for online exams are the same in local currency as for face-to-face -face exams and for the recorded exams um, we're pitching those at the same as our performance award exams which in, in real terms for those that aren't familiar with all these different exam types it's just coming in slightly cheaper basically. Um, the report forms themselves from both platforms the recorded exam and online exam platform um, are both issued um, electronically. Um, the certificates this has been another little sort of issue shall we say um, we haven't been allowed by Ofqual to issue digital certificates. They are quite adamant they do not want PDF versions of certificates being emailed out. Um, it's too easy to um, amend a PDF essentially and the security protocols that you put in place aren't completely robust. So they have been adamant from the outset that no certificates have to be um, printed, posted. Now along with all other companies, middle of March, we went into lockdown work from home, couldn't access the building at all, um, University of West London buildings. Now, some opening up has happened more recently and we are now starting to clear our backlog of certificates, but there is a backlog because we haven't been able to gain access. So for those of you that have been inconvenienced by that, very sorry, but there has been nothing that we could do about that. But we are now trying to work towards getting those out and getting those out as quickly as possible. Um, and I appreciate that's been a frustration for some of you, but it was one of those really difficult areas for, for us to proceed on. Um, the certificates as well will state um, sort of in a, in, a, in a very small line somewhere that the exam you've taken is either recorded or online. Again, that was on the back of regulatory advice that we include that in there for monitoring purposes so that we know who's taken what exam. And so there is a very clear track record. We have to submit all this data to our regulators as well. So there's a very clear sort of journey through. But just to emphasise, it's it's you know, we, we've followed the regulatory process here and on the ERF as well with the guidance and conditions from, from Ofqual and the other regulatory bodies. Um, so these, these, these hold the same value, if you like, um, as 
a face-to-face -face exam. And that's a very important point to, to emphasize again and mention. Um, so full details on both these options, of course, are on the LCME website, um, just from the, the main homepage, uh, lcme.uwl.ac.uk. Um, I think we'll be flicking up that page at some point later on. Um, and then there's a link on the homepage to digital exams, and that's where um, all the information is stored. Um, the, when you go to those pages, you'll see that we've split um, the, oh, there we go, the page appears as if by magic, by the Magic Pixies. Thank you very much, Magic Pixie. Um, so just scrolling down a little bit further, if the magic, there we go. Um, so you'll see there's a list of subjects there, and if, you, if, if one of those tabs is opened up in any one of the subjects, and then it'll open up with um, recorded exam requirements, which is just a broad document outlining in general terms what's required, and then there's a more specific document around technical work and discussion questions. See there are two versions of that, I'll talk about that in a second actually, particularly as it relates to the, the pianists. Um, and there, there's a similar range of documents available under each subject heading, so it gives you the broad information and then the specific questions for technical work and discussion questions um, that need to be sort of picked up and responded to for each of the grade levels. Um, now on this particular point, as you can see from that's being shared there, um, this document was revised in July. So there are two versions of this in play at the moment um, because we felt it necessary to amend the initial version. You know, we were, we were getting stuff out really quickly, as quickly as we could to respond to people. And I make no apology for that. You know, we wanted to get stuff out. And then, you know, you do this and there was nothing wrong with what we'd produced initially. But then as you go through it um, and respond to feedback from people, you then look again at what else can we cheat, can we tweak and change to make it a little bit better. And, and we're, we're beginning that process now. So that's why we produced an amended version of the technical requirements um, for the piano exam. And um, again, for any of you that are, that are aware of that and are now getting a bit kind of concerned or confused about, well, I've started working on this one and can I still use that one now? There's the new one. You know, we'll, we'll work with you as flexibly as we can. So, um, you know, just, just get in touch if there's is any issues or concerns around that. Um, another sort of um, issue and query that's cropped up is around the, um, the, the, the technical work and if you like the sort of integrity of the exam room environment, because of course the exam room now is, you know, the, the, the candidates front room or, or wherever it may be that they've, that they've got their instrument and they're recording themselves. Um, now, obviously we would expect the technical work, you know, your scales and your arpeggios to be played from memory. Um, and somebody has sort of raised a query about um, if a candidate could have uh, a written list of the scales in front of them or could have, you know, mum or dad um, um, announcing that, um, you know, what the, you know, the C major scale, A harmonic minor, whatever it might be. Um, and I think this, this really sort of ties in with um, our, our existing policy around special consideration. Um, so if there is a particular need for whatever reason that, that a candidate needs that additional assistance to have, um, have that, that prompt for what they're meant to be playing, um, then that's absolutely fine. Again, you know, notify us so that we can make the examiner aware that that's what's going on um, and then that's fine. And if it is, you know, if it is a sheet of paper with the, the scales written on them, we just sort of asked that they would just very sort of quickly, you know, hold the sheet of paper up to the camera so that we can see it's not, you know, got all the answers on it, uh, basically. Um, we've, throughout, we've made it clear as well that we will accept pieces from other exam boards for our recorded and online exams. And we did that um, very openly and, and honestly, um, just to allow people to still carry on learning, to still carry on taking an exam um, where if they were engaging with another exam board that didn't have um, a, a system in place to enable them to be assessed and we were able to. Um, so, and that, that, that continues at the moment. So if you, uh, if, you, if you are preparing pieces from another board and want to hop across and use us, then we'll take the pieces from the other, from the other board that you've got prepared. There's no problem with that at all. Um, other sort of practical issues that have, that have occurred, of course, over the last, um, over the last few months, pianos being out of tune um, and only having access to a digital piano rather than an acoustic piano. Um, now the out of tune piano is a tricky one, uh, depends how out of tune it is. Obviously we understand that it's been difficult for people to get their pianos tuned, so um, provided, um, you know, we can loosely hear that it's tone-tone, semitone, 
um, then of course that's that's absolutely fine. You know, we'll be as flexible as we can be there, provided it's not um, it's not too um, it's not too horrendous. Um, and use of digital uh, digital piano rather than acoustic one. Yes, of course, fine, provided it's full size and weighted keys. I mean, that's the only um, sort of I think hopefully fairly obvious uh, criteria that we would build in there. Um, the next heading I've got on my notes here is what have we learned? <laughs> well, boy, what have we learned? I could talk probably for half the morning on this topic alone, to be honest. I mean, my goodness me, as with all of us, um, the learning curve that we've been on personally, as well as professionally, has just been, I mean, just like nothing any of us have, have, have ever known. Um, we've learned that our digital options, so our online and recorded exam, clumping them together as digital options, have been immensely popular, immensely popular. Now that's good, but of course it's presented us with um, logistical challenges. Um, have we got everything right? No, we have not got everything right. Um, there's been a lot of problems that we've experienced, a lot of delays that we've experienced as we've been trying to move as quickly as possible to offer you something to ensure things can continue. Um, whilst we've been working remotely um, and dealing with obviously, you know, all of the human worries that we've all been dealing with as well, but that to one side, just trying to get things up and running um, securely and robustly and as best we can to provide that platform for you. Um, and it's been new and it's been challenging uh, and I'll be completely open about that. And my goodness me, we have learned an awful lot about um, what to do, what not to do, and how we can improve this and develop it um, for the next stages going forward. Um, and I'm going to come back onto that um, in just a second or two to talk a little bit about what we are now doing. So it has been a tremendous learning curve. Um, and we have been slow at times in responding to some of the queries that you've made um, about various things. And I'm very sorry about that. Very sorry about that. We have worked the very best we could uh, and we are continuing to do so um, over what has been, of course, extremely challenging conditions for absolutely everybody. But um, really to address all of those issues that you may have about, about um, less than ideal experiences that you may have had, we are now working on a phase two of our recorded exam platform. Our partner organization, ISOM, who have developed our online exams, are now working to produce our next iteration of our recorded exam platform. And in short, this will um, resolve all of the issues that we have been dealing with um, in relation to the recorded exam submissions. So by that I mean, for instance, there will not be an upload file size limit. Um, they are building a, a, a sort of a portal where the candidate will record their content directly to that portal. You can press delete and you can record it again and you know you, when you're happy with it, then it gets sort of uploaded as it were. Um, so that, that recording platform as it were will be directly on that that sort of access area. You can still record by one of those if you want to and upload it, that's fine. Again, there won't be an upload limit. Uh, well, you know, certainly won't be 150 megabytes anyway, it'd be much more realistic so that you can, you can upload the content. And as part of this, um, we will also be um, asking people to start recording everything in one go. So as if you were sitting the exam rather than individual file sizes, just so that it's more robust um, in, uh, from a, from a post-COVID regulatory point of view. I'm going to come back to that point again in a minute or two. So, so file that thought for a minute and I'll come back to it. So it's also, as part of this process, it's, all going, to, it's also going to include a revision of the, um, the pages that just flagged up in front of you a few minutes ago on the LCME website. So the journey to access all of this um, from the LCME website will be much, uh, much smoother and much coherent as well. Um, this new platform is under development now and it will be available early September. I can't pin down any more than that to a specific date because obviously these things, um, these things sort of progress. Um, uh, but 
early September. And I, I cannot stress, we are extremely fortunate to be working with uh, an organization such as ISOM on this. They are extremely strong in this whole field. Um, so they are, they are a, 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 an excellent organization for us to be with. And I've got complete faith um, that the product they will produce um, in conjunction with us um, will give us this, this digital exam platform. So this access area where candidates will come in and they'll choose their recorded exam option or their online exam option. Um, and it'll, it'll enable you as teachers to sort of submit multiple entries from your various uh, students as well as individual students to, um, to sort of upload as well. So um, for those of you that have um, interacted with us already, um, thank you for your patience. <laughs> thank you very much for your patience and for bearing with us as we, um, as we have been sort of you know, dealing with this and working through some of the issues. Um, but, but please be reassured, um, the, 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 there's, there's, there's good things coming, really, really good things coming. Um, and we are with this for a while, let's be honest, we are having to deal with this. And we're also looking at post COVID as well. Um, do these digital exam options remain with us post COVID once we're through this? Yes, I think they, they do. Absolutely, I think they do. I think they're gonna be an important part of our um, assessment portfolio now going forward. Um, and that requires us to operate in a more robust way so that we don't have to comply with the conditions of the ERF, but we have these as, as standalone qualifications and assessment procedures in their own right. And we're working with Ofqual um, around that. And that comes back to that point I was making a few minutes ago about the, the sort of the revised recorded exam platform will require candidates to, to record everything sort of in one go rather than individual files. So it more closely reflects what you would expect them to do and prepare them to do. Um, for that for that exam. Um, now, you know, is an online exam or a recorded exam the same as a face to face exam? Well, no, it's not. I'm not going to pretend it is. It's different. Um, but it, this is another option. It's another assessment option. Um, it's our only assessment option in a lot of places at the moment. Um, and it will continue for some time that nobody knows the time frame on to be our only assessment option until things to settle down. But personally, um, I and myself and the, the, the team at LCME and at the University of West London, we feel it's very important that we keep these um, as a part of our part of our suite of assessment options going forward um, as well. Diploma exams, just as a little sort of, um, you know, almost a final note. Um, I've left this till almost the end because we have a procedure in place to assess diploma candidates as well digitally and it's very much a blended approach really because it's drawing on the sort of recorded exam uh, platform as well as the online platform so in simple terms uh, the bits that you need to record you record so if it's a performance diploma your performances if it's a teaching diploma that sort of lesson component um, and the presentation record onto a video. And then the bits which need a conversation with the examiner, so the, the discussion elements, the Q&A bits, that, that sort of side of things, um, they'll be done um, via an online chat. Um, so again, we, we're doing that already, um, but obviously as you can appreciate, once we have the new platform launched in early September, um, as that's all from the same provider in terms of the platform itself, um, that enables that to, to sort of run much more seamlessly between the two as there's that blended approach. Um, really then the final thing just wanted to say is what about face-to-face -face exams? Um, yes to face-to-face -face exams. This, none of this moves us away from our commitment to be running face-to-face -face exams anywhere around the world at all. Even once all of this has, has gone away, and we've got some sense of normality back, please. Um, as I said, we still will be maintaining these digital exam options, but that doesn't at all mean that we're trying to move away from running face-to-face -face exams. It's just another option which provides flexibility, enables people to take an exam anytime, any place, anywhere, for anybody that remembers the Martini adverts. Um, so it just, it just provides that flexibility, we feel, for people around the world in order to engage with us. Um, and we'll continue to work with you and with our partners around the world as we develop uh, and work through all of that. So um, thank you very much. 
uh, for your time for listening to me and I do hope you've found it useful. Merv, thank you very, very much indeed. Now, we are going to, I have some of your very specific questions. I'm going to just share the screen on that now. And um, let's see if I just hit share. And okay, there we go. Okay, so this is, we're going into the final phase now of our webinar where Merv is going to be answering um, these specific questions. So, okay, first question, Merv. Can spring 2020 candidates still revert to recorded online exams? And then a second part of that question, can spring, um, so we're talking about candidates who entered post um, lockdown, can they upgrade? In other words, pay the, um, the additional amount from grade one to take grade two, let's say. Yeah. Nice and easy to answer because it's yes to both. Okay. Nice, nice and straightforward. That, that, and, that's, and that's it. You know, we, we were expecting that it was going to take quite a while for, for the, you know, that we'll, we'll probably deal, be dealing with sort of, um, you know, transfers and conversions from our spring candidates at, until at least the winter session. Um, so, yeah, short answer is yes, that's absolutely fine. Okay, super stuff. Okay, second question here. I haven't yet received results for students who have taken digital exams. How can I follow up? Um, email to the LCME office contact details um, on the on the website. Okay, perfect. Um, what happens if a student enters for an online exam only to discover that their internet connection isn't good enough following the connectivity call? So you've talked about there is a call to check that the internet strength, but let's say something happens and it's not good on the day. Yeah, I think I sort of touched on this a little bit when I was when I was speaking, but basically there is um, so there, there's a, there's a technical support team um, that, that we have with with ISOM with our, our, our sort of platform providers. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, they're on hand if there is a problem um, and is, you know, they'll, they'll make what assessments they can. Is it a problem at the examiner's side or is it a problem at the, the, the candidate side? And there's obviously there's a range of options they can go through. Um, you know, the last line in the sand, if it can't be resolved, the last line in the sand um, is that the exam will have to be postponed and rescheduled. I mean, you know, if there's a power failure, for instance, or, you know, just just <laughs> these you know, things crashes. happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean exactly. Sure. You, you know, I think I said as well, we haven't had this yet. But my goodness me, of course, it's going to happen. I mean, it, you know, um, the more the more teched up you get, the more prone you are to something going wrong. Um, of course, that's 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 always going to happen. But, I, you know, the, the point is we have a technical support team in place there with ISOM. So that 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 mechanism is there, um, you know, to advise and resolve and, and, um, and, and rectify where they can. And, you know, as I say, um, last line in the sand, then then we just we just have to sort of rejig the exam. OK, lovely. Uh... Okay, and I think you've pro you've touched on this actually as well. Are the fees yes, for mention. digital yeah. exams yeah. the same as face-to-face -face exams? So there is a slight difference. Then the the recorded exams are slightly less. Is slightly that cheaper. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And just in terms of fee lists on the website, is that um, is there a page on the website for that, or is it kind of by default that if someone's entering for a digital exam, that the payment whenever they put in, let's say, a grade five exam, that the appropriate payment comes up. How does that? Yes, it, 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 it does. It does come up, yes. And I, but I think, um, as, as well, it, this, is, this is very much on my list of things that we have to kind of improve the communication around. And, we, and we're going to be mopping that up again with, with sort of the, the development of this digital exam platform, which includes um, a sort of a re reworking of our web pages as well. To so sure. so I, I, you know, I'd be the first to admit that, that we need to make that information clearer. Um, but it does, yes, yeah, certainly if, if you sort of open up and select the right one, it comes up with the, with the fee as you're uploading. But, we, okay. you know, we need to, yeah. I've got, got that in hand to get that information more clearly represented to people. Great. Uh, okay, for recorded exams, it doesn't seem possible for teachers to be named on the certificate. Going forwards, will this be rectified? Yes, it will. Again, it's one of those, it's one of those things on, on quite a long list um, that, that we're, we're sort of mopping up with, with, with phase two, basically. Okay, great. Uh, my students still haven't received their certificates. Can you give me an update on what's happening? And again, I think you have, you've pretty much answered this. So basically, yeah, you can now go into the yeah. university. 
No, hands in the air on that one. You know, I do, do apologise again for the delay around this. Our hands were tied, as I say, for, for sort of practical reasons around that. But we are, you know, we are printing certificates now, so we are working through working through that. So, and we'll get those out to you just as soon as possible. I, I'm, you know, sorry. I know it's I know it's been a uh, it's been a nuisance um, to put it to put it mildly, but uh, but we are, you know, we are working on that now. No, that's correct. Okay. When will, so this is a piano specific question, when will mm -hmm. the 2018 to 2020 piano syllabus expire and when will the new piano syllabus be released? Um, new piano handbooks and syllabus are being worked on at the moment. They're in development. Um, I'm hoping that they that, that will all be released um, sort of towards the end of this year um, so that we'll sort of stick to that expiry date of the current syllabus to get the new one um, to get the new one launched. Um, when the new one is launched, we always do a three exam session overlap. Um, so the current syllabus will be valid basically throughout the whole of, of, of next year, 21. Of 2021, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, recorded exams are now looking like a watered down version of traditional exams is what one teacher has written. Uh, I'm concerned that recorded exams will become the norm and that elements such as sight reading, oral and live performances will become sidelined. Can you respond to that? Um, well, okay, it's an interesting question. Um, I think first, my, my first response there would be um, referring back to one of my opening comments that we, we used our format for the recorded exams. We use, if you like, our recital grades as um, as a sort of a basis to build it on and our recital grades we've been running as very very popular exams for recital grades and leisure play exams actually I should say both of them as very popular exam options for quite some time um, and there are many candidates and teachers who like the fact that the emphasis is on for those is on the performance elements of it um, and I think this sort of comes down to um, you know a teacher's choice and a candidate's choice you know we've all had um, pupils who are, are stronger in better areas and get under a lot of stress and panic under an exam situation when faced with an oral section or sight reading. Yeah, okay, yes, as teachers, we're trying to create rounded lessons and we're trying to ensure that everything's being taught and all the rest of it. But equally, what do we want people to do? You know, we want them to still engage musically and to love their instruments and to go on and learn and develop and all the rest of it. So it's an option. That's it. We're just providing another option. Now, if the if the lady or gentleman that submitted this question fundamentally doesn't like what's happening with the recorded exams, well, okay, that's fine. You know, the blunt answer is then don't use them. You know, use some of the other options that we've got. You know, our online exams are exactly the same as a face-to-face -face exam in terms of content. And we are still committed to running face-to-face -face exams as well. So it is just another option in our portfolio of assessments, which will work for some people, and won't work for others and that's that's you know that's really all there is all there is to it absolutely yeah uh, that idea of a portfolio I, I like that um okay and i think this is our final question the discussion component of the recorded exam is worth is worth 20 percent how can i effectively prepare my students for this component what exactly is expected well, really, it's, it should be a matter of following the, you know, the, 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 the questions that we've outlined in the documents on the website, um, because that's, um, you know, that, that, that we, we provide the various questions that we expect people to respond to. Um, and obviously, it's, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's an area that we are working on and, and evaluating um, on how we evolve it as we go forward, because, it, you know, it is not the same um, if, if I'm examining somebody and, you know, you ask somebody a question, and they're sort of, you know, quite, quite sort of, uh, quite shy, perhaps, and you sort of get a little mumbled one or two word response, and you want a bit more information, well, you can probe for some more information. Whereas, of course, on a recording, if somebody said, didn't see major, and that's it, and you're expecting to get a little bit more, that, that's all they put on the recording. So I, I think, you know, we are, we are continually looking at all of this to sort of update the advice and the feedback we give. But, you know, um, encourage your students to be as verbose as vocal as they can be and um, to to sort of explain and to show a little bit of um a little bit of knowledge and energy and enthusiasm about what they are talking about you know um if they're asked to identify you know what their favorite piece is you know don't just say it's the minuet um well why is it you know what i mean just just encourage them to talk you know you, you will do this in the lesson anyway you will have these conversations in the lesson anyway and you will be sort of encouraging with them so um, I think, I suppose two things I would say, 
you know, firstly, firstly work on that basis and, and, and just encourage them to be as vocal and as, you know, as open as they can. And also, you know, feedback. If, if you've got, if you think this section isn't quite working and you've got ideas as to what you think we should be doing in order to make it a little bit more robust, I mean, just, you know, do, do let us know um, because that's how these things will then shape and, um, shape and evolve. Okay, great. Um, and I'm actually, my final slide on this and then we'll, I'll come off uh, screen share is just to mention what I did at the very um, outset of the webinar. And this is something that the Curious Piano Teachers, we do a lot of is kind of supporting. So we have, um, we have a scheduled webinar um, for, uh, for next month. Because um, I think Sally, there was a question came through with regards to, if you just maybe read out the, the one sample question that you yeah, have Yeah, I think there, there was, Yes, you, you had a query, didn't you, come through to you about the discussion questions at grade eight. I think it was the one that said, what can you tell me about the composer and the historical or stylistic context of the piece and how did it, how did it affect your interpretation? Which I think is a fascinating question. In fact, you know, we love a lot of these discussion questions because they really make you kind of yes. dig down and think about, it's not just about playing the music or playing the notes, it's about where did this come from? How, what affects it, you know, what, let's take Chopin, for example, at grade eight, you know, what about the pedaling with Chopin? Was legato pedaling even invented when Chopin actually um, was, was writing his pieces? All these things you can start to consider and there, then you get beyond the exam experience, I think, into really understanding mm. the music behind those notes. So. We're, we're planning on digging into this and helping people come up with some, some responses that, that should prove both interesting and, and useful for, for performances and for pupils and students everywhere. Sharon? Absolutely. Um, so again, Justin, I know that um, Sally will put into the, um, I'll just stop my share. Sally will put into the comments um, just the link that you can, um, if you're wanting uh, to come over and join us at the Curious Piano Teachers, the first month's completely free. Um, and these are the sorts of things that we do help and support one another with. It's not just Sally and I, it is, um, you know, we're talking uh, about, you know, 600 piano teachers from, from around the world. And once we start in there, we have a discussion. In fact, it's very interesting. We did have a discussion a way back when one of our members was entering a candidate for grade one. And that very question coming up on, you know, this is your favorite piece. Why is it your favorite piece? And the question going out into our, our, our Facebook chat. Okay, so where could we go with this question? And we had a lovely discussion uh, around that where lots of members hopped in. So that's the sort of thing that, um, that we're doing. Uh, over there, which I'm sure many people will, will find useful. And I was just, just seeing Sharon over in the community in our Facebook, private Facebook group. There's a lot of excitement at the moment about the key awareness cards that you've, you've just shared with everybody over there. And the people getting terribly excited about that. And also, we've had a, a lot of exciting discussion going on about a new potential platform that doesn't seem to have any lag or latency. And in fact, um, it was interesting what you were, you were saying about this, Merv, and I actually went for a trial on this, and I sang the duet along with a guitarist last night. Wow. So very, very exciting, and, and that, that's all going on within the community. We, we kind of get little advance warning of these, these little hot spots, let's call them. Mm. So, Wonderful. Sharon. So, Merv, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you for coming on this call uh, today to answer so many questions. And I'm, I'm aware that we did get, as I say, close to 200 questions through. Um, and I know we've, as a, as a team effort here, we have done our best to, to give you the information that you need. I know there will be some questions, very specific questions that we haven't been able to answer. Um, but there is, obviously, there is the, um, you can contact the LCM uh, head office. And I guess it's, it's just like what Sally has said at the very beginning of, of the importance of us actually being patient. Um, I know even when I put out um, the invitation for people to send questions in. I think it was maybe was it last Thursday or Friday and I came in and I saw something like 30 questions sitting in my inbox to answer or to kind of to, to follow up and to, and to pull together. 
And, you know, 30 emails like that just made me actually feel quite overwhelmed. So I have no idea what it must feel like for the likes of the, the LCM team to be going in to, I know Merv has said before, to literally hundreds of new emails. Um, and I know we do have these questions, but we all know just how much we have we have struggled. We have been doing, you know, Sally's been adding up her screen time and it's kind of sometimes in the region of about 12 hours of screen time a day between online, you know, teaching online lessons, doing, you know, the, the general work that we do online. So we do, going back to a point that we do say a lot of the curious piano teachers, the need to be kind. And um, I know Merv that everyone at the LCM team, along with other exam boards, have been doing their best. Uh, we're putting together a brand new website at the minute. It's taking us ages, absolutely ages, because all those little things, you know, when you press this button, where do you go next? So we have a very small idea of what you have been managing to get all these systems in place. We completely understand the, the revisions because that's what we are doing all the time. You know, this doesn't work. You've got it out there. You have to retract it because this is better. Yeah. And then people do get frustrated because they think, so what do I do? But of course, this is just part of the process. And I think as a profession um, of, uh, you know, of music educators, we can be very proud with, with what we have done. Looking at some other professions, I think we can really give ourselves a big cheer and say mm -hmm. that we have been yeah. learning a huge yeah. amount. We've been moving forwards and, uh, and learning so much. So the webinar replay, I just want to finish by saying the webinar replay will uh, be emailed out. Um, I'll be going out loading that now and emailing it out to everyone who has registered. And once again, Merv, thank you so much for being on our live call today. My absolute pleasure. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.